my November view reviews I've done in black and white, but I thought for this film, having this color background was um, appropriate if you've seen the film. Uh, if not, watch the film and you'll get it. Um, today's film was uh, 1987's Insomnia, which was remade by Christopher Nolan in 2002. I haven't seen uh, his remake, so this is this was all new to me. I didn't know what was going on um, going in, and I really loved it. Like, it's awful as 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 you expect from a, a scandy noir but like oh man um the thing I loved the most about it and the reason I'm not in black and white right now because I wanted to capture this like sunlight coming through my blinds in a, in a color way is the film utilizes that technique of the blinds but instead of blinds because this is this is Europe and specifically northern 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 Europe it's this like um gauzy uh um, what are they called? Um, curtains that the light shines through because it's it's the midnight laying on the midnight sun, and it's so like he cannot. The, the title is because he can't sleep insomnia, um, and he can't just sleep because of the sun. There's more to it, but the um, the way those curtains are used throughout the film, both in his room, in other rooms, from the outside, all kinds of stuff was my favorite recurrent visual image from this film, and. Um, I just really, really dug it. So it's directed by Eric Schulzberg. I probably said that wrong. Um, and written by Eric and Nik Nikolai Frobenius. Um, an original screenplay. And it stars Stellan Skarsgård as a Swedish uh, detective who has left Sweden because he um, has no ethics. And <laughs> basically was shamed into leaving Sweden. He's come to Norway he and his partner, who is much older, are headed to the most northern part of Norway, just below the Arctic Circle, to investigate the murder of a 17-year-old girl. Much like the film I watched yesterday, the um, most competent detective was the woman, who doesn't get as much time as the other ones. I think partly in both films because perhaps they because they are the better at their jobs, they're, you know, less interesting to um, follow. I get that. Um, I get that following uh, someone who's, whose life is falling apart is, makes for more, more interesting drama. Um, and I get that the, the, both these directors clearly understand that women are superior. That was fantastic. Um, but I kind of liked both movies from the point of view of the women, actually, because they were, they were so good and they were so competent. And her tracking down this guy's incompetency, for me, would have been a stronger film than watching him bungle his way through uh, getting out of the trouble he's gotten himself into. Um, basically, the plot is they're tracking down this killer. They um, manage to figure out how to get him to come back out. Um, they get him in this really foggy area, and then the one the cop played by Stellan Skarsgård accidentally shoots his partner in the fog. So then that leads to him trying to cover that up while also um, while also finding the actual murderer and um in doing so he gets blackmailed and then they try to you know cover it up even further by by framing somebody and it gets darker and deeper and till you're just like wow everyone is terrible except for the you know teenage girls and this female detective who was super badass um so that's the plot it's very noir it's very um everyone is terrible uh, everything is terrible, everything you expect out of life is terrible, uh, you know, there's no hope for anything. Um, but what was lovely about it was the way that it had this horrible, sad outlook on life, um, shot in the most beautiful way. Uh, the cinematographer, Erling Thurman Anderson, this was one of his last films, he'd been making films in Scandinavia for the last, uh, since the early 70s, and um, he's a clear master of of capturing the beauty of that area and um not just the the lights but um the interiors uh that you know that very famous Scandinavian design aesthetic is captured so beautifully and and it's so beautiful while you're watching it and then contrasting with this, this horrible story um is really just fabulous I I I, I liked that um sort of contrast a lot um, and then the exteriors are so bleak. They're so bleak. Um, it's not, it's, it's much like how Iceland, instead of looking beautiful and gorgeous, 
in yesterday's film just made you never want to go to Norway because it was just bleak and cold and awful and, and there's too much sun. And then there, when there wasn't sun, there was like blinding fog and you're just like everything, of course everyone, you know, drinks too much and, and then murders each other. Like what a horrible place to live. No offense, Norway. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this, this, this presentation of Norway made it seem particularly horrible. Um, and then you have this great performance from Stellan Skarsgård as, as just the worst kind of dude. He, you know, you, you find out why he um, had to leave Sweden and you're like, wow, you're, you're terrible. And then he shoots his partner and you're like, wow, you're still, you're even more terrible. And then in the middle of trying to, um, you know, get his way, get himself out of this without, you know, confessing, it was an accident and he, he probably could have gotten away with it, you know, and, but I guess even if you shoot your partner on accident, you get kicked out of the force. I don't know. He shoots a dog in his attempt to cover it up. Yes, a dog. And then um, he is clearly has boundary issues when it comes to women. Let's put it that way. Um, and you get that in his backstory. And then you very much get it in his in interactions with the woman who's running the hotel he's staying at. And there's this horrible great scene where um, she's trying to show him newborn kittens and they're beautiful baby kittens and he's like I think they're terrible and then he basically misreads signs and tries to sexually assault her and she's just like I just wanted to show you kittens you monster um, and there's another sequence where um, he misreads signs and basically kind of attempts to um I think he thinks he's trying to pleasure this teenage girl, but really he's assaulting her. And you first get it from his perspective, and you and you think it's a little erotic, and but you're like, oh god, he's this, he shouldn't be doing this. Um, but you get it from his point of view, so it feels erotic. Then it cuts to her, and she's so clearly uncomfortable um, that it's no longer erotic, and it's it's disgusting and gross, and you know it's disgusting and gross, and you know he's disgusting and gross. And what's great about the film is even though spoilers. He, he gets out of all of this, you'd never once root for him. You never once think, oh, yeah, he's, he, he's um, an anti-hero. He's just anti. He's not nowhere close to being, you know, you, you never once think, I'm glad he made it out. It's, it, what's so bleak is he makes it out of this, and you're like, god damn it, fuck this guy. Um, I thought that was brilliant because it, it didn't make you think – yeah, I'm glad this guy made it out. He's not that bad. It's like, no, he's terrible, and he shouldn't have made it out of all of this, and he did because life is terrible. Um, so this is a great Life is Terrible movie. Great final, um, not final noir, but um, one of the last films I'm watching on Filmstruck. I'm, I'm glad I watched it because it's, <laughs> life is terrible. So with that, go into the world thinking how everything is awful.